Hello everyone and welcome to another Yu-Gi-Oh! tutorial video. Um, in this one I will be talking about different battle positions in the game and a little bit about what battling actually looks like. Not in too much depth, but it does involve... It, it's, it's hard to describe battle positions without describing battle. So. Um, so here I am, I got my monsters in my hand here. And you'll see that they have these stats on their card that say attack 800, defense 400. It's different for every monster. I mean, some monsters have the same, as you see with uh, Meta Bat and Kage Musha of the Blue Flame. They both have the same stats. But generally, it's it's varied. Um, some monsters have higher defense, such as Aqua Mador, who has 2,000 and only 1,200 attack. Some monsters have higher attack, like Leotron, which has 2,000 attack and zero defense. So he has no defense whatsoever. Um, now, in general, when you're uh, choosing which position to put a monster in, it makes more sense for higher defense monsters to be in defense position and higher attack monsters to be in attack position. That's just intuitive. Um, there are exceptions, of course, but uh, for the sake of stats, we're just going to talk about that for right now. Um, now, I've already talked about in another video, normal summoning and setting. And as I said in that video, you cannot normal summon in face-up defense position. So I cannot, uh, if I do the normal summon option for Aqua Midor, I cannot put him in face-up defense. I will have to put him in attack mode, which means he has this 1200 attack stat to use and not his 2000 defense. If I set him, he's in face-down defense position and I have his higher defense to use. So we're going to go ahead and set Aqua Midor because he's much better as a defensive option. Now it's opponent, my opponent's turn. Okay, now Clown Zombie has zero defense and 1350 attack points. So my opponent is gonna summon Clown Zombie. They have no idea, by the way. Um, you can see it here because it's my field, but normally you wouldn't be able to see what card this is or what its stats are. That's hidden from your opponent. So they're gonna summon, summon Clown Zombie in attack mode, and they're going to attack into my Aquamador. Now what's going to happen here, they don't know this. Again, they don't know this card's stats. They don't know what the result of this battle will be. But because I have Aqua Midor and I can see what his card stats are, I know what's going to happen here, which is my monster's defense is higher. And therefore, well, it's in defense position and his monster is in attack position, he will take damage equal to the difference between his attack and my monster's defense, which in this case is 650 from 1350 to 2000, okay? So watch this, he's gonna attack. Boom, loses 650 life points, but his clown zombie stays on the field, okay? Now, I should mention too that defense position is always uh, shown as a card being sideways, whereas attack position is always shown as a card being face up just like this in and straight on i drew clown zombie okay now i'm going to demonstrate what happens when two attack position monsters battle I'm going to summon leotron in attack mode now clown zombie is in attack mode and leotron is in attack mode leotron has more attack points than clown zombie by 650 he has the same attack as aquamador has for defense and you'll see that when I attack into Clown Zombie, because I have higher attack, his card, he takes that damage, that 650, once again, the difference, and his card is destroyed. So attack position monsters that attack into defense position monsters that have more defense, you're going you're gonna to take the damage as difference, but your monster is not destroyed. Whereas with attack and attack, which everyone has weakest, is destroyed. Go to end phase. Okay, now he's going to summon Leotron in attack mode. And when two monsters have matching attack, unless their attack is zero, monsters with zero attack, if they collide, uh, nothing happens. But anything more than zero, if they have the same attack points, both of them are destroyed and neither player takes damage because there's no difference. The difference is zero. So we go like that. You see both monsters went to our graves. That's called crashing. Okay, my turn. I just summon Skull. So I'm going to go ahead and summon Summon Skull by tributing my Aqua Midor because Summon Skull is level 6 and therefore requires one tribute. I'll go to end phase. Now my opponent is going to set their Aqua Midor. Okay, and then they're going to end. 
as you can see, I have no idea what this card is, or at least I shouldn't in this formatting I do, but if I was just looking at the card like this, I have no idea which card this is. Um, but I'm going to attack over it with Summon Skull. It's 2,500 attack points. He has only 2,000 defense, so his monster is destroyed. When an attack position monster with more attack than the target's defense attacks, that defense position monster is destroyed, but your opponent does not take damage equal to the difference. So you'll notice my opponent did not take the 500 that they would have taken if Aquamador was in attack mode with 2,000 attack, because it's 2,000 and 2,500, right? If Aquamador was in attack mode with his attack, which is 1,200, it would have been 1,300 damage but he was in defense mode, so no damage was taken. There are, at this point in the game, a bunch of cards that alter that ability and sort of give cards the effect of piercing battle damage. And piercing refers to when a monster with higher attack attacks a defense position monster, your opponent still takes the difference. Um, but those are specific effects, so I'm going to end my turn. Now, there are effects from both monsters and spells and traps that alter uh battle battle positions so this card is called block attack it's a very old card you can target a face up attack position monster your opponent controls and change it to face up defense position now notice how summon skull has 2500 attack points but only 1200 defense points so he's much attack he's much more attack heavy than he is defense heavy so we'll activate block attack here change him to defense mode forcibly now, if my opponent does battle with my Summon Skull, his defense stat will be used, which is only 1,200. So they can just summon Tiger Axe with 1,300 attack and destroy my Summon Skull, getting it off the field and getting rid of my powerful monster that I had to tribute a monster to get. Now I've got Neo Aquamador. And he, like Aquamador has much higher defense than he does attack, but he requires a tribute, so I can't bring him out this turn because I don't have any monsters to tribute for my normal summon. I'm going to have to use my normal summon to bring out Clown Zombie, who has 50 more attack points than Tiger Axe and therefore can destroy it and deal 50 damage to my opponent's life points. That's their turn. Okay, they drew reinforcements. Now, there are many effects in Yu-Gi-Oh that alter attack points or alter how battles work. Reinforcements is one such card from early in the game. The, it is a trap, so he can't activate it this turn, but he's going to set it. And then, let's see, let's summon uh, Kage Musha of the Blue Flame in attack position and end. Now, let's say I summon Tiger Axe. And Tiger Axe has 500 more attack than Kage Musha, so... You know, if I attack into it, it should be destroyed, and my opponent should take 500 damage. Okay. Sorry for the interruption, that's my cat. Um, so we'll enter battle phase. Here we go, Tigrax attacking. However, my opponent has reinforcements, and this is a trap card that gives his monster 500 attack until the end of this turn. This card, because it's a trap, and it's a battle trap, can be used during the battle phase. So he's going to use this. Give his Kage Musha an extra 500. And now they have the same attack. So they both were destroyed. However, I still have my clowns on me, so I'll attack directly. And then I'll set my own reinforcements. Okay, Drew Dark Magician, the classic. Now let's see if we can... Uh, we'll just restart here and see if we can get... Another battle. Okay, here we go. So we've got Quaking Mirror Force. This is a card that happens when your opponent makes an attack, so we'll just set that. I Let's say my opponent summons Leotron and wants to attack me for 2,000 damage, which is a quarter of my life points. They go to attack. I can activate my Quaking Mirror Force. So this will change all of my opponent's attack position monsters to face down defense position, and monsters who are changed to face down defense position by this effect cannot change their battle positions. So boom, I do that. He's in face down defense. And then he ends his turn because he's already summoned. He can't really do much else. 
Now, Leotron is now in face down defense. It has zero defense. I know what it is because it's already been summoned in a, in a face up. So I'll summon Neobug. I'm not going to attack. Normally I would, but I'm not going to because I want to demonstrate that because of Quaking Mirror Force, he cannot change this card's battle position as you see that note there. So it's his turn. Normally he'd be able to flip this and change it to face up attack, but it won't let him because of Quaking Mirror Force. So he's just going to summon. Neobug. Use block attack to force my Neobug to defense mode. And then be able to destroy it. Now, he didn't deal any damage because mine was in defense, but this way he keeps his Neobug on the field, whereas otherwise they would have crashed and both gone to the graveyard. My turn. Alright, now let's see if we can find Sakuratsu. Which is a card I want to draw. There it is. So I'm going to set my Sakuratsu armor. I'm going to summon my Kage Musha. And then my turn. Now, Sakuratsu, Sakuratsu armor is a battle trap that just destroys an, a monster that attacks, regardless of its stats or anything like that. So he's going to summon Tiger Axe because it has 500 more than Kage Musha. And he thinks, like, oh, I'll just. Attack into his Kage Musha, destroy that, and deal 500 damage. He's going to go for that. But then I can activate Sakuratsu Armor, which he doesn't know I have. Destroys his monster, and the battle never took place. We never entered uh, the damage step or battle calcul or damage calculation, so I don't take any damage, and my Kage Musha stays on the field. Then he ends his turn. My turn. Now I drew Shield Crush. This is a card that just destroys a defense position monster on the field, but it only works on defense position monsters. So we'll end. And he, let's say he sets his Kage Musha and ends his turn. Now you see I can use Shield Crush because he has a face, um, a face down defense position monster. There are lots of cards that specify face up. So if Shield Crush said target one face up defense position monster in the field, destroy that target, I wouldn't be able to use it because this monster is face down. But it just says def defense position, which means face up or face down. So I can go ahead and use that. Destroy his face down monster. Get that out of the way. Then let's summon Tiger Axe. And we'll attack directly. Now you see, by summoning Tiger Axe, I have a total of 2,100 attack points on my field. If I had tributed Kagemusha for Summon Skull and used my normal summon for that, I would have done a total of 2,500 damage. So I would have done 2,400 more damage. Um, but maybe I want two monsters on the field instead of one. Uh, maybe I have something more powerful I'm hoping to bring out using these monsters. You never know. Um, in this case, I you know, just was demonstrating that difference. But... Opponent draws. Gonna summon Leotron. He's gonna attack into Kage Musha for 1200 damage. And he's gonna set Sakuretsu, set block attack, and be as a bluff to make my opponent to make or to make me think, oh, I don't know what that is. It could be something that stops my attacks, that punishes me for attacking. And phase. He's got Leotron, which has 2,000 attack. I'm going to tribute my Tiger Axe for Summon Skull, which has 2,500. I'm trying to destroy Leotron, but he's got that Sakuretsu armor. Boom, there goes my Summon Skull. And now I'm in a bad place, because I have no monsters. He's got a pretty powerful monster. It's his turn, so he can go ahead and summon something else, like Clown Zombie, and hit me pretty hard for 3,350, which is almost half my life points. And that's pretty much going to do it for this video. I hope that effectively summarizes for you attack position versus defense position, cards that can change those positions or have effects that rely on a monster being in such, such a position. Um, and I hope that also explains the basics of how battling works in Yu-Gi-Oh! When it's attack on attack, uh, damage is taken and the loser dies unless they have the same attack in which case no damage is taken and they both die when it's attack on defense and the defense is higher you take damage but the defense but the attack attacking monster is not destroyed when it's attack on defense and the attack is higher defending monster is destroyed but generally 
your opponent does not take damage. And uh, defense position monsters obviously cannot attack.